I'm Melissa Chavez, and I'm here with Mayor Sam Adams of Portland. And uh, you just gave a keynote at Open Source Bridge 2011. And could you tell us a little bit about what you talked about and uh, what initiatives you mentioned today? Well, today we um, I unveiled our open source, very beta, very preliminary um, platform for what we're calling CitySync. Dot com that seeks to put together the best of and most useful of uh, the public produced information, but then also combined with you know private um, information and the kind of platform that allows us to um, show off uh, local software and digital development uh, developers and in the process you know prevent problems in the city and make sure that we're getting the most out of technology in terms of helping to make Portland, you know, the best that it can be in the, in the most syrupy sense of the word. Um, and can I ask you, uh, related to that, is there any particular data that you think uh, we haven't explored yet, we haven't collected yet, that you would like to see be made into uh, an app of some sort? Well, the one that, you know, that I talked about today was it's really, it's as much about facilitating sort of human connections and human relationship, which I think is at the core of the open source philosophy. Now, how do we put together, you know, a very compelling uh, site uh, on, on the web, uh, in an app, you know, multi-platform, how do we put together something that's very compelling that, the, that every Portlander will want to sign up for and be involved with, and in the process of doing that, you know, in, in the case that I, I uh, mentioned today is making your neighborhood safer. Um, because, you know, the empirical data shows that neighbors who know each other and have a certain amount of contact information and sort of know how many people are living in the house, the more there are people in every neighborhood in Portland that have that, mm -hmm. the safer that neighborhood will be. Uh You've also been focusing in a bit for, through your tweets and things on um, some recent gun violence that's happened. That's so I was right. wondering if uh, there was an effort to uh, monitor that <clears throat> more too. Well, the, definitely there's, um, you'll see on even the, the beta of, of City Sync uh, a, a great big nozzle uh, of information, uh, both public and in the media, that's very hyper local. And that's with a local company called Nozzle. Um, but again, it's, it's uh, our collective challenge as a city isn't, we don't have the luxury of just disseminating data. We have to go that next step and without a lot of effort, help people be part of solving the issue of, of gang violence and gun violence. And if it's as simple as simply, you know, knowing your neighbor, having some contact information, a way to communicate um, in, a, that in, in a manner that people feel comfortable with, if that's what it takes, that's pretty, in the scheme of things, that's pretty darn easy. And that's exactly what technology and open source and the vibe and esprit de corps of our particular, particular uh, software and development, uh, digital development community, that is the esprit de corps of Portland. So I'm hopeful. It's not an easy task, but I think we're up to it. And um, <clears throat> this is kind of a fun question. What apps do you use? Oh, I think I have over like 70 apps. Um, I use uh, Tweetbird uh, a lot. Um, I use, uh, I'm now into Patch Life because it allows me to follow the law about public records and retaining uh, information, which I'm required to do even uh, you know, social media. Um, so it sort of keeps a nice daily diary. Um, I use uh, Photogene a lot for uh, improving upon my bad uh, photography because uh, it always lightens it and clarifies it. <laughs> so um, I'm very impressed uh, with that app. I use uh, PDX Bus, um, which is a local app, mm -hmm. which I think is just really sharp. Um, I use, uh, I end up using um, Yelp a lot, um, you know, and I wish I had a local option, but I use Yelp a lot. 
um, to sort of look at people's comments about local places. Um, I've got a lot of followers on Foursquare. I've never actually checked in on Foursquare. I'm, uh, I'm really thinking about it this year, but uh, I'm trying, I'm, I don't, you know, my security folks don't like the idea of Foursquare, but. Uh, uh, we do have a local one and. What is it? I should use that uh, one. Geoloki. Geoloki. And we just had a GIS, a geolocation a hackathon last night. Too. Oh, good. Yes. So, I think we've got a real strength in geolocation. Uh, and I know you can monitor your own stuff and you don't necessarily have to make it public, oh, but that's they great. would track it if you're interested in something like Geo that. Geoloki. Yes. Thank you for that tip. We need to sign up for that. Um, and one other mm. thing is uh, what other things do you think um, people could use some of the city data that has been released, has been collected, that mm -hmm. you think could be utilized a bit more? Well, um, I think, you know, my hope, uh, my vision is we move from app to, um, you know, we use apps to reinforce um, and, and fortify the reality, the sense and perception of community. And, you know, that's what City Sync is about. It's about multi-platform, again, on the web, iPad, Android, you know, iPhone, um, which I think is where things are headed, sort of the ubiquitous, you know, the cloud in a way is an expression of that. Mm -hmm. But I think bringing together something online that represents um, who we are as a city and region, um, who we want to be, and at the same time as we do that, it, you know, it's got to be compelling, it's got to make business sense in the small b, uh, people have to want to go to it. And in the process of doing that, you take together sort of, I sort of view these apps as, as fibers that we have an opportunity to weave together. And that's what the vision of CitySync is, is really to bring together um, these, these uh, pieces on a framework that when put together, um, you know better than anybody else what's going on in your neighborhood that day. You know what the special at your favorite local restaurant is. Um, you know, the more I can get Portlanders to act local, um, the more likely we are to meet our climate action goals, to improve our economy and su support businesses, to, to reduce congestion of people driving around town because they simply, for example, don't know what's available in their own neighborhood. So I kind of asked that in a way to um see what your thoughts were on, um, you drove your Prius up here, uh, mm -hmm. on people who own low emission vehicles or who bike mm -hmm. or for some of these data sets uh, having to do with where new business um, licenses are being exactly. uh, brought up or where people are getting liquor licenses, something like that, because I've seen a lot of this data um, being open to the public more, not just here, but in other cities. It was funny, the, a fellow uh, from Seattle approached me in the, in the foyer and, and said, why can't the city of Seattle you know, do what you're doing in terms of open data? Uh, and that's a great compliment to us, but Again, what I'm trying to charm and cajole and inspire people to is think you know, beyond the data and app. Um, and we need to do a better job as, as leaders to sort of sketch out, which is for us in the fall will be the Portland plan, what is it we need to do in every single neighborhood? What, are the unique, what is the unique set of priorities for every part of Portland? Uh, to improve, improve on equity, improve on educational achievement, improve on environmental, you know, social um, uh, and economic uh, justice issues. So I don't think we have even started to scratch the surface of the true power to connect, create, and make community. And the one last thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, I believe it was July 9th. Could you tell us a little bit more about the Code Sprint? And so July, July 9th uh, uh, is the Code Sprint um, to work on key, um, you know, the, the key issues around um, how can we take, you know, city sync and beta 
um, how can we, uh, again, focus on some key issues that aren't just about technology. In fact, they're about, you know, technology is in service to a higher goal. You know, we all agree with that. And my hope is that we'll start, we'll, we'll start figuring out how to have that conversation more effectively in the hackathon on July 9th. Um, you know, allows us to take the next step in our uh, target industry, uh, PDX11, and putting together something that creates community around mentor and mentee uh, relationships to build this, this industry. And I'm excited. I, I didn't know, I will tell you that, that some of the best known talent, because I think we have amazing talent that isn't well known, I was incredibly excited how enthusiastic they were to, you know, at no cost, help the rest of the industry succeed. I was really excited that they sort of didn't view it as competition. They viewed it as, you know, critical mass that in turn helps them, even if it's competitive in nature. So I'm very excited for July 9th. I encourage everyone to come on down. Thank you so much for your time. You betcha. Enjoyed the interview. Thank you.